Solving circular motion problems is much the same as solving any of our other dynamics problems. Just like before, we start any circular motion problem with a free body diagram. We add forces to the free body diagram just like before. Again, there's no special forces to add. If we're working with a satellite, the force will be gravity. If we're working with a car turning a corner, the force will be friction. The direction of the force will always be towards the center of the circle, if we know it's moving in a circular path, which is also the resulting direction of the acceleration. This is a requirement for centripetal acceleration. Remember that the resulting acceleration for a centripetal acceleration problem will always be towards the center of the curve. Just like any other dynamics problems, the next step would be to write down Newton's second law. F net equals MA. On the F net side, you just put in the forces just like before, taken from the free body diagram. And on the right side, we often add a little c to our acceleration, just to remind ourselves that the acceleration we're talking about here is centripetal acceleration. From there, you can use your equation for centripetal acceleration. Choose one depending on the information you're given. And then, solve for the unknown. Nice and familiar. To review, the goal of this video is to get you to realize a few fundamental things about solving circular motion problems. 1. You start with a free body diagram just like before, with no special forces here to include, just gravity, friction, tension, etc. 2. Write down F net equals MA just like before, Newton's second law, where you can add the little c to the acceleration just to remind yourself the nature of the acceleration. To calculate the acceleration, use the given formulas based on the information given. And four, solve for the unknowns just like before. That's it.